Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the stage CEO and co-founder Liju Thomas. excited with all that Nexaraz is doing. Can we give Stephen Alvaro a round of applause? I was uh, just standing in the back and thinking about this. This is a 29-year-old gentleman. And he's today making more money than corporate CEOs. Isn't that amazing? And he just got started in this company, what, a year ago? And within seven months to get to that position, once again, let's give it up for Stephen Alvaro, everybody. Who's just happy to be in this environment? If you are, can I hear you? The reason I do what I do, man, because it's, I just love this. I love this environment. I love the crowd. I love each and every one of you. Is that amazing? So look to your neighbor and say, I love you. Somebody felt that awkward. Who agrees the world needs more love? Accidentally, my son switched on the TV the other day and the news came up. I thought, you know what, I haven't watched it for a long time. Let's just see what it's all about. News, right? N-E-W-S, North, East, West and South. What's happening? And literally within five minutes, every cell in my body wanted to commit suicide. <laughs> it's crazy. Right? It's depressing. And I'm thinking, my goodness. You got the tax increase, you got inflation increase, you've got uh, fuel shortage, you've got uh, energy companies shutting down. And I thought COVID was done and now we've got different variants coming in. It's crazy. I looked at the word Omicron. Isn't that crazy if you flip the letters around? Omicron means moronic. <laughs> and then Omicron and Delta, if you flip the word around, you know what you get? Media control. Isn't that weird? And I'm thinking about this. Why does the media not give good news, man? You know, and I remember going back to before I came into this industry and waking up every morning and listening to this news every single day, feeling just depressed and depressed and depressed. And I said, I'm so glad I'm in the industry of uh, network marketing, man, because this industry allows you to live every single day with, uh, you know, a sense of joy. Isn't that amazing? I remember taking my kids uh, in the tube to the zoo and, you know, we were in the zoo and my son, my oldest son is looking at me and saying, why is everybody unhappy? I said, son, it's because it's a Monday morning. And statistically, the heart attack rate goes up by 35% on a Monday morning. That's because people don't like Mondays. And my younger son, I've got three sons and a daughter, my younger son now turns to me and says, when he's sad, when people are unhappy, he remembers the song that he's supposed to sing. That's his favorite song. And his favorite song goes like this, if you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. You do clap your hands, but we do stomp your feet because he likes to move. If you're happy and you know it, Stomp your feet if you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it if you're happy and you know it. Stomp your feet. Isn't that great? Everybody, thank you. Thank you. My singing is rubbish. Everybody in the tube is looking at him it's like he's an alien. Isn't that crazy? People have forgotten how to smile. But what I love about in this environment over here is, you know, people have a reason to smile. Who agrees there's a reason to smile in next rise, right? Because we give people hope, H-O-P-E. What does that mean? Hold on, pain ends, right? That's what we do, and that's the beauty about being here. Listen, go to your friend and ask them, how are you doing? You know what the most common answer is? I'm fine. Have you heard that before? What does fine stand for? F-I-N-E, feelings inside never expressed. <laughs> F-I-N-E, frustrated, insecure, neurotic, emotional, it's crazy. If somebody asks somebody next size, how do you feel? You say, I'm great. You know why I'm great? Because I'm grateful for next rise. What does great stand for? G-R-E-A-T, getting really excited about today. So look to your neighbor and say you are great. So you saw me, you know, riding a bike is the best thing that I've ever done. You know, it's my favorite hobbies. And today each and every one of you has come over here. You know, the reason you've taken your valuable time today is so that you can have success in life. That's what you're here for. You know, and so what I want to do is spend the next few minutes talking to you about the concept of bike, 
which is B-I-K-E, which is the success, and how you can actually ride a bike of Nexorize and achieve success, yes? Now, does anyone know to ride a bike over here? Yes? If you don't know to ride a bike, don't worry, because I'm going to teach you today. Is that okay? So if you're ready, can you say, I'm ready? So what does the first letter of B stand for in success? When you ride the success, uh, you know, to get to success, the vehicle of success, which is Nexorize, what does B stand for? B stands for balance. Can you say balance? I want to tell you a story of a, a conqueror, and the conqueror is by the name of Alexander the Great. Have you heard of him? He's somebody who conquered the entire world, one of the richest people in the world. He got sick and he's dying, and on his deathbed, he asked the people surrounding him that I've got three wishes that I want you to do on, you know, in my funeral service. Wish number one, from my palace to the actual place where you're going to bury me, make sure my coffin is being carried by my doctors. Wish number two, the journey from the palace to where you're going to bury me, make sure the streets are covered with the money that I have made. And wish number three, Make sure that the coffin has got two holes on the side so that I can put my hands outside but my body is inside. And you carry that coffin in front of every single person to the place where you're burying me. Now when all of the people around him ask him, can you please explain to us what does these three things mean? He said, I have conquered the entire world. I am today the most successful man in the world. But the three things remain simply this. Number one is where I am asking my doctors to take me is simply because the biggest and the best doctors in the world couldn't cure me of my sickness, number one. The number two, he said, the money that I've made is only good enough because empty that I've come with all the money that I have made, put it on the way to my grave because I'm not going to take it with me. And the hands outside, he said, empty have I come into the world, empty I go out. Many of you are going to achieve success in Nexorize, but let me tell you what real success is, is having a balance, because the first thing to ride a bike is you need to have what? Balance. balance. If you don't have balance, I'm telling you, no matter how good you are, how great you are, if you don't have balance, you're going to end up dead. So as you're going to achieve success in Nexorize, what is the formula of success in Nexorize? Is having a balance, a balanced life of health, wealth, and wisdom. Think about that. That is what true success is all about. A lot of people, especially myself in the beginning days, I thought to be successful, you just got to make a lot of money. That's absolute rubbish. Success is a balanced life of health, wealth, and wisdom. Now, what is health management? Now, I'm not going to talk to you about how you can become health and filthy because I don't believe in diets. For me, D-I-E-T means do I eat today. It's rubbish. <laughs> Here's how you can manage your health. Four simple principles, and you'll have the best health life, is eat well, sleep well, move well, and think well. You follow those four principles, I promise you, you'll have the healthiest life that you can imagine. If you're clear, can you say I? All right, now let's go into wealth. Now, what is the difference between being rich and being wealthy? Rich means you got a lot of money. Yeah, rich means you got a lot of money. Wealth means you've got money and you've got time. That's the difference. The real concept for you in Nexera should be, I need to be wealthy, not I want to be rich. Yes? So you need to know how to manage your money and how to manage your time. Now, look at this. Here's one concept of money management. Now, let me tell you, I've been to so many seminars around the world. I've been to so many leadership sessions. Nobody ever teaches you how to handle your money. Isn't that crazy? And today, I want to talk to you about something that... I have learned from the multiple amount of books that I've read all over the world and a lot of uh, you know, uh, inspirations around the world. I've created a system of money management that I use myself. And I want to share that with you. Yeah? And that, strict, uh, that system is called the strict money management. S-T-R-I-C-T. So here's what I want you to do. Each and every one of you, if you can do it, trust me, it will really help you. It's something that I teach my kids as well. All right? Get six jars. Yeah, jars like this. Get six jars in your home. That's something you teach your kids. But think of each of these jars as bank accounts. So open six bank accounts. All right? And then label them as S-T-R-I-C-T. -T. Now, what does S stand for? That is the spending jar. That's what you're going to use. The money in that jar is what you're going to use for your day-to-day -day spending. What does a T stand for? Taxes. That's the taxes jar. Teach this to your kids at a very young age. Because only when I got my first job, I realized there's something called taxes. And I hated it. But it's part of life, yes? There's two things that's certain in life, death and taxes, okay? 
Next one is R, it's called the reserve jar. It's what also called reserve or the rainy day jar, something that you use in terms of an emergency. The next one is called the investment jar. The next one is actually called the charity jar. And the last jar is called the tithing jar. The charity jar is what you give people. Tithing jar is for what you give your faith, whatever your faith may be. Now, whenever you get whatever kind of money, especially you're going to make money in next rise. Whenever you get money, even if you're sitting in a job right now, here's how you should allocate the money within these jars. The first one is you've got to put 50% in the spending jar. So what does that mean? How much money can you use for your daily expenses? What percentage? Now, I know what you're thinking. Lead you. I can't survive on 100%. How am I going to survive on 50%? Listen, this is just a guideline. This is a secrets of the wealthiest people in the world. You start today with what you can and aim to get to the end of the year at 50%. How do you do that? Downsize, live between, below your means, right? If you've got a very expensive phone, sell it. You just need a normal phone. If you've got a 60-inch TV, sell it. You just need a small TV if you want to watch it, but your phone does everything for you. Get to a point where you can spend 50% and you can live on 50%. Now you are working and starting to live and move and think like the wealthy. What is T, taxes? 20% of the money that you make, you put it into the taxing jar. Get used to it. As soon as you get money, 20% goes to the taxing jar. What does the R stand for? Reserve, put 10%. 10% of the money that goes into the rainy day or the reserve jar, that's for emergency. I is investment. 10% you put into the investment jar. And then C is charity. You put 5%. And T is tithing for your faith, 5%. This is the way that you actually manage your wealth through the six bank accounts. For many of you, it might look foreign and it might look very scary. But start doing this. You soon start to see that you don't have to chase wealth. You don't have to chase money. Money starts chasing you. For example... If you got 10 pounds like this, simple example, 10 pounds, so what you got to do is in the spending jar, you put 5 pounds. In your taxing jar, you put 2 pounds. In the remaining jar, you put 1 pound. In your reserve jar, you put 1 pound in the investing jar, 50p in your charity jar, tithing 50p. That's how you manage your wealth. Now, when do you open these jars? Spending jar, you open daily. That's what you do all your daily expenses with. Taxing jar, when do you do it? At the end of the month. All right, this is, what you this is what you teach the kids as well. We take the tax money and they, they're used to the fact of they have to pay tax. When do you use a reserve emergency jar? Only in the case of emergency, you open it. Others, you don't open it. Next one is investing. When do you open that jar? When it's full. What do you do with the investing jar? Use the money in that jar to make more money. It's so the rule of investing is money that you have in seven years will double. Teach your kids that. Teach your cousins that. So when it's full... Get your kids to open it. Here's what I'll tell my cousin who came and said, my investing jar is full. You know, I've got 30 pounds in it. What do I do with it? I said, find a way to now double the money. How do you do that? I said, listen, go and buy a blender from Tesco. It's 20 pounds. Go and buy some lemons. Then go to the nearest yard sale and then make some lemonade. Sell the lemonade and use the money and double the money you have in the investing jar to 60 pounds. So you teach people at a very young age of how to invest. Now, the investing jar is also used for investing of education in the mind. Training events, knowledge, books, that's the money you use from that. Charity, open it monthly, find a way to give it to somebody who actually needs the money. And then finally, your tithing jar monthly, give it to your faith. Now, here's what happens. When you follow this, follow the system, which I call the strict system, I am telling you, you will not see many people teach this around the world. But this is what the wealthy people do. They learn to manage their money. And guess what happens? Because of the system, money is now coming back into their accounts. That's the beauty about it. Does that make sense? Say I. 10 people. Does that make sense? Say aye. aye. All right, that's better. Next one is time management. Very important. You have the most important commodity in the world. What is that? Time. T-I-M-E. Today I must earn. Yes? So here's the thing. How much time do you have in a day? How much time do you have in a day? 24 hours a day. Seven days a week, that's 168 hours. How are you going to manage your time? See, most people, they, what they do is they work for 40 hours a week. Take that out. Next one is they, they sleep for eight hours a day. So that's 56 hours a week. Take that out. Then 35 hours is daily. That's your shopping, your eating, your drinking, your bathing. Now you're left with 37 hours. These 37 hours is all that you need to become a senior vice president in Nexarise. Do you realize that? So it's what people do with the extra 37 hours. You know what most people do with the 37 hours? Ask me. Lead you, what do most people do? Somebody said it. They use it for entertainment. Isn't that crazy? They use it for? 
entertainment. You want to use the 37 hours to build your business with next size. And if you use those 37 hours consistently, I'm telling you, you'll be really successful. But here's what, you know, wealthy and smarter people do. That something's quite phenomenal. Yeah, because think about this. If you actually spend eight hours a day sleeping in a year, that is 2,912 hours, which means 33% of the year you have slept. Isn't that crazy? You've slept 33% of the year. Think about this. Instead, science has proven. Do you know what the average amount of sleep you need per day? Do you know what's the average hours? It says four hours of quality sleep. That's all you need. Four hours of? You don't need eight hours. Now, I'm not telling all of you to sleep four hours. Some of you are like, what are you talking about? But just think about this. Imagine instead of sleeping eight hours a day, you just slept six hours a day. This is two hours lesser a day. Now look at this, the total number of hours you will be spending is 2,184 hours, which means when most people are, people are doing 80, sorry, 8 hours a day, they're sleeping a third of your life, when the most people have 12 months in a year, you are actually getting an extra 30 days, that means you have 13 months when they have 12 months, isn't that amazing? And that extra month... You can do a lot with it, you can build a legacy. So that's what, you call, that's what you talk about time management. You see, this is what I've understood about time and money. Yeah, time and money, the smart ones use it. The rest abuse it. That's the reality. And that is the reason why Mary O'Connor said this, if you look at the bee and if you look at the mosquito. You see, it says, it's not so much how busy you are, but why you're busy. The bee is praised, the mosquito is swatted. A lot of people are busy, right? I mean, do you know people, I mean, have, you, have you spoken to people and say, I'm very busy? Have you heard that before? Yeah. I say, B-U-S-Y, what does that mean? Being under Satan's yoke. It's not about being busy, it's about being productive, right? So I talked about the success is a balance of health, is a balance of wealth, which is time and money. And the final W is? Final W is? Wisdom. Now that's a tomato, right? Yes? Just checking. Is that a fruit or is that a vegetable? Okay, I'm going to make my point. What's the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Knowledge is the tomato is a fruit. So well done. For uh, whoever said fruit, give yourselves a round of applause. But what's wisdom? Wisdom is not putting that in a fruit salad. Does this is make sense? The definition, the definition of wisdom is the right application of knowledge. A lot of knowledgeable broke people out there. A lot of successful wise people out there. Wisdom is the right application of Knowledge, that's the key thing, you know, reminds me of a story of wisdom, I just want to tell you a story, is that a husband and wife are having a conversation, the wife looks at the husband and says, hey honey, listen, can you actually go to uh, uh, the place where we can donate some of my clothes, I've got loads of clothes to donate. The husband is like, listen, why don't you just throw it away in the trash bin, yeah? But the wife said, no, there's a lot of poor starving people who might need these clothes. The husband then said, listen, <laughs> if they use your clothes, I can guarantee you they're not starving or they're not poor, does that make sense? Next thing you know, he ends up in the hospital. Moral of the story, know what to say, when to say, how to say it. Yes or yes. <laughs> now, DMO, daily method of operation. You understood how to manage your time. You understood how to manage your wealth. How do you now all put this together into next rise and build a legacy with all the things that you're doing right now? And it's all about priority management, how you manage your priorities. And I use something called the seven F's, is how do you allocate the 24 hours in a day to the time that you're giving? The first F stands for faith. Most important thing is you give time towards your faith. The second F is called fitness, that's your health. The third F is family. Now why does family come after fitness? It's simply because health is well, if you are not healthy, you become a burden for your family. So that's the reason why you got to look after your health first before you look after your family and allocate time. The fourth F is what F is called a financial career, which is your job, which is you got to allocate time towards it, is what I call your bread and butter money, right? But a job is not designed to make you wealthy. If you agree, say aye. 
right? So the next F is called your financial calling, which should be next arise or residual income. See, a financial career is what you're paid for. A financial calling is what you're made for. If you agree, say aye. When a four, yes, you can clap for that, absolutely. When a four letter word called work, W-O-R-K, becomes a three letter word called joy, J-O-Y, you never have to work a day in your life ever again. That's financial calling. And then comes your friends. And finally, the, one of the last but not least is number seven is fun. You gotta have fun in everything that you do, otherwise everything is not even worthwhile. You've got to have what? Fun, you gotta have fun when you're practicing your faith, when you're practicing your fitness, your family, your career, your calling, your friends, and everything. That's why they say laughter is the best. Medicine. Laughter is the best? Medicine. Unless you laugh for no reason, then you need medicine, yes or yes. <laughs> okay, that is the reason why my subconscious mind every day, one of my daily affirmations is this. Every day, in every way, my life is getting better in health, wealth and wisdom. Every single day I say this to myself. Every day in every way my life is getting better in health, wealth and wisdom. That's when my subconscious mind realizes that without even you knowing it, you're actually becoming wealthy and healthy and that's the best part about it. Okay, so that is B, balance life of health, wealth and wisdom. Now let's go into I. Now here's a question for each and every one of you. What is that amazing creation? What is it? Where was it first created? Okay, what is this amazing creation? Where is it first created? India, okay. What is this amazing creation? Tallest building in the world. The, the Burj Khalifa, where is it created? Dubai. You're absolutely spot on about the creations, but if you look at the reality of where it was first created, it was actually first created in somebody's mind. I stands for intent. That is very important when you come into the journey of success with Nexorize. You see, the book Think and Grow Rich defines the word intent as definite, definiteness of purpose, knowing exactly where you want to go and how you want to go. It's like a GPS signal. When I'm actually driving on my bike, I actually have my GPS on. I know where I am going. Now, here's the thing. If I make a wrong turn here and there, that GPS will nag me till I take the right decision to get to where I'm going. Am I making sense, everybody? That is intent. One of the most powerful books in the world is called The Richest Man in Babylon. And it's been written, you know, the, the wisdom of this is nearly 2,000 years old. It's a tough book to read, but if you can read it, definitely do so. In this book, it talks about the importance of having intent definiteness of purpose, knowing exactly where you are going. One of the greatest painters in the world, Van Gogh, what he said was this, I dream my painting, then I paint my dream. See, that's what you gotta do, each and every one of you have that intent, have that reason for why you wanna be a success story within Nexarise. What's great about, this is my favorite slide in the presentation. If anyone in next slide agrees with me, can you say aye? Aye. This slide gives you intent. What is the amount of residual income that you want to earn, that you want to be, become financially free? And that's it. This, let's say if I want to make 5,000 pounds a month, it covers of all my expenses, I'm now financially free. That's my intent. Now what I want to do with this intent is I want to be smart about it, and then let's say I want to become a TC3000. Add up my monthly expenses, my bills, my mortgage, my rent, uh, all the stuff that I need to live, and let's say it's 3,000 pounds. So now I know exactly what I need as my intent. So I'm gonna be smart about it. What is smart stand for? S stands for specific. Let's say I wanna become a TC3000. I know exactly I need 3,000 pounds a month. Now, is it measurable? Yes, I need 15,000 business volume. Great. Is it achievable? Yes, it's 150 BV a day. I can do that in my team, or if I have to find 100 people who actually does 150 BV a day, there you go, in 100 days, I am now a TC3000. Look at this, is it relevant or is it realistic? Yes, I need to do three presentations a day. If I can do three presentations a day to get my 150 business volume a day, brilliant. And finally, T, is it time bound? You gotta put a date for your intent and it has to be written down clearly. 
your intent has to be written down as well. 1950s, they did a research in Harvard. They continued that research in 1979. And they realized something. They took out MBA graduates, and they asked how many of them wrote their intents down or their goals down. 84% never wrote anything. 13 odd percent, they had a goal or had an intent. 3% wrote it down. They followed their lives 10 years later. Here's the amazing discovery. The actual 13% of people who had goals, they made more money than the other 84%. Isn't that crazy? But the other 3% who had written goals or written intent, what they did was they made more money than all of the 97% combined. Isn't that crazy? So you got to have a written intent. Now another thing that you will see that bikers do is they actually give clear intent. You know, we have something called a lifesaver check. Before we make any turn, we got to make sure we do the lifesaver because a lifesaver is a lifesaver. What is that? It's intent to people who are looking at us knowing exactly where we are going and that lifesaver saves your life. A lot of bikers get into accidents because they don't actually do the lifesaver checks and that's what intent is all about. See, to give you an illustration, that's what you have to do. Everybody needs to know that you're a raging fan of Next Rise. A cricket match happening in Australia, Australia and India, uh, a man called Brad Hogg is bowling and he's bowling the ball against the best batsman in the world, Sachin Tendulkar. Now, I, I used to be a, a, a bowler in cricket and your aim as a bowler is you want to take out the best batsman. That's what you want to do. So Brad Hogg takes the wicket of Sachin Tendulkar, the best batsman in the world. And next day newspapers, this image was there on all the newspapers. Brad Hogg finally gets his dream. He takes out the wicket of the top person in, um, uh, in cricket. So what he does is he takes out a paper cutting, takes out this image, goes to Sachin and says, hey listen Sachin, great playing with you man. Can you actually sign me an autograph? Now what happens when no, most people sign autographs? What are the words that they use? All the best, best of luck, right? Sachin wrote an autograph and this was the three words that he used, which was the most famous autograph in cricket. And he said, this were the words, never again mate, never again mate. Now I think the whole world is now watching this. In front of everybody he's saying, you're never going to take my wicket again. 21 times Brad Hogg played Sachin Tendulkar multiple games after that. Everybody's watching if Brad Hogg will ever get Sachin's wicket. And 21 times, he never was able to do it, he finally retired. Isn't that amazing? Now what did Sachin do after he actually got his wicket out and he wrote, never again mate? He actually went and practiced. He actually went and he had a clear intent with his coach that I should never get out to Brad Hogg ever again. And that's the point. The point here is this. You got to make your intention clear to the entire world. You got to be a raging fan of Next Rise. You got to go and tell people what you're going to do within Next Rise. Hey, listen, look at me in the next few years. Here's where I'm going to be. And that's the beauty about it. You got to actually let people know, hey, I'm going to become a regional vice president. I'm going to become a senior vice president. If you agree with me, can you say aye? Aye. Okay, now let's go into K. Now, one of the things that bikers do is this. Yeah, one biker sees another biker and we have a language of our own. Now you see, when a biker does this to another biker, you know what that means? <clears throat> Be careful, there's police ahead. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? We have our own language. K stands for kinship. When you come into Nexorize, you get to have your own language. This is another signal. You know, when one biker sees another biker, they do this. You know what that means? It doesn't matter how big the bike is. I might be driving a 750cc bike or a 1000cc bike. I might meet somebody who's doing a 125cc you know, bike. But when I see another biker, we do this. You know what that means? This means that, listen man, I know you are on two wheels like I am. And this simply shows mutual respect. See, when you come into next size, you're now sitting in a room. We are different. We are not normal. We are different from people outside. And there's mutual respect between all of us. We know the struggles that each and every one of us take. And we know that for you to be somebody to walk on the stage and put a pin on, it's mutual respect. That's the reason why you might see people here in this room, we're all alike. But when you go outside and you meet two people in Next Rise, you do the mutual respect nod. You know what the mutual respect nod is? That's mutual. Look to your neighbor on your left and right and do the mutual respect nod. Because you know the struggles, it's not easy. Who agrees it's not easy? It's 
It's not easy to build next to rice, but it's definitely worth it. And that is why kinship is very important. You got to surround yourself with the right kind of people, my friends. This is a man by the name of Guglielmo. Very powerful story, yeah? He's 21 years of age. He goes out with his friends and he tells his friends in a party, he's having some wine and with his friends and he's telling his friends an idea, a business idea. And that's it. That's all. He comes back home. Next day, we got people knocking at his door. And he opens the door and says, who is it? He said, we are from the mental institution, the mental hospital. We have come to take you with us. He said, what? For what? He said, you said something in the party yesterday. Your friends have said us because their friends think that you've got schizophrenia. He said, you can't do that. Well, yes, we can. A police officer comes, takes Google Elmo and puts them in a mental hospital. And along with all crazy other people. Can you imagine? The doctor finally comes after a few days, he's in the mental institution, and the doctor says, listen, we've understood that you've got schizophrenia because you said some stupid things to your friends. He said, well, listen, doctor, you're an educated man. Listen, come with me to my house, and the same stupid thing that I told my friends, I'm going to show it to you. And if you think that it's real, take me out of this hospital. But if you think it's not real, put me in the mental hospital for the rest of my life. The doctor goes with him and he shows the doctor the stupid things, the stupid business idea. And his business idea was, I can take human voice and put it from one machine and invisibly transfer it to another machine. And he proved it. 13 years later, Guglielmo was the individual who was put in a mental hospital, won a Nobel Prize because he was Guglielmo Marconi who invented the radio and he's the same person who inspired each and every one of you today using a mobile phone. Isn't that crazy? So when you take your mobile phone in your hand, think that the guy who actually inspired this device to be right now in my hand was admitted in a mental institution when he first gave the idea. Think about this, when you are building your Nexarize business, your friends will think you're crazy. Your friends will think you are mad. It happened to me, it's gonna to happen to everybody, but that is normal. You gotta make sure that you are in a place where no matter how precious you are, if you're not in a place that values you, you are nothing. I had an IBO come up to me and said, Liju, I've spoken to all my friends. Nobody wants to sign up into Nexarize. Have you heard that one before? You know what I did? I actually took my phone out. I went into his Instagram profile and I showed him just the weekend where he went clubbing and drinking with nearly 20 of his friends. I said, if you've got 20 of your friends to go drinking with, isn't it weird that you don't have one friend you want to do business with? Do you understand? I said, you got to be very careful who your circle is because here's the reality, being close to the wrong people can ruin you. When I first came to, uh, you know, in this industry and I showed the business to my friends, let me tell you something, they didn't want to do anything with the business, that's fine. You know, I moved on, I managed to soon realize that my circle is creating my issues, I actually was able to gain some success. After a while they came to me and they still come to me and say, hey Leisure, you have changed. You have changed. I said, yes, absolutely, I've changed. C-H-A-N-G-E means choose happiness and never give excuses. <laughs> you understand? I wanted to change. That's why I moved and that's the reality. Now, that doesn't mean, now my old friends, so let me tell you something. If they are your real friends, they will be with you or they will never leave you. But if they're not your real friends, let me, I call them as, in, uh, uh, they're not real friends and they don't build a business with you, that's okay. But if they still don't keep connection with you because you've now started building something big, I don't call them as friends anymore, you understand? I actually call them undercover haters. <laughs> that's the reason why one of my favorite statements is by Tupac. And he said this, it's very powerful. He said, just because you lost me as a friend doesn't mean that you gained me as an enemy. I'm bigger than that. I still want to see you eat. Just not at my table. Be very careful. 
of who you surround yourself with. 25,000 of the most successful people interviewed in the world by Napoleon Hill, and he wrote a book called Think and Grow Rich, and he said the number one reason why people fail in the world, the number one reason is because they listen to their own friends, relatives, and family. Isn't that crazy? So K is kinship. You understood balance, you understood the intent, you understood K is kinship. The final thing that a biker needs before he can ride a bike properly is E, the equipment. You need the what? The equipment. And the most important equipment is your helmet, yes, but what is that used for? That's used for head protection. Okay? Head protection. When you're building your business in Next Rise, the most important that each and every one of you need is head protection. You know why? Because each and every one of our heads are covered with something called ants. We all have ants in our heads. You know what ants stand for? A-N-T. It stands for automatic negative thoughts. Research has proven when they check the number of thoughts. This is what research has proven. The average number of thoughts per day is 60,000 somebody goes through. 60,000. Isn't that crazy? Here's the second research has proven. 98% of those thoughts are the same as the day before. Here's the scary part. 80% of them are negative. Isn't that crazy? So that means as I'm standing here talking to you, I could have about 48,000 of those negative thoughts coming in because my brain is full of ants. So you need head protection, yes? And that's the reason why, have you ever driven a car, a brand new car? You love it, right? But the moment you get into traffic, negative thoughts come in, you don't actually see the value of the car anymore. Has anyone got a boyfriend or girlfriend here before? If you're not raising your hands, you're lonely. When you first, first fell in love with your partner, the way she looks, the way she smiles, the way she chews a chicken, everything is cute. <laughs> and then the negative thoughts come in. One year later, you can't stand it, right? You got to make sure you got what? Head protection. How are you going to get head protection in next rise? You need to read the books that is so important. The videos that are so important, the trainings that are so important to get rid of those ants. Now, if you want, you can take a picture of this. I say you don't have to read 120 books. You just need to read 12 books 10 times. One book a month. Read the books. These are the books that allow you to get rid of all the ants in your head on a regular basis. The 48,000 negative thoughts on a regular basis. After I, list, I watched the, 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 the actual TV news and I was depressed, I needed to go and read a book because it got rid of the ant immediately. Am I making sense? If you agree, say aye. The next thing that you need to have is body protection, is the armor around you. And your neck, the armor around you, the protection that you wear is all armored protection, is a Nexarize system. The system is something that you've got to use in Nexarize to be a successful business owner within this company. And what is the system? It simply stands for P-I-P-S, PIPS. Say PIPS. Yes. What is P on a regular basis? What you gotta do is prospect. Speak to people and says, hey, I'm just curious, what do you do professionally? Do you look at other ways of making money part-time? Do you look at a way of having more time? Come and have a look at something that I've got. I is then invite. If I send you an invitation to look at something, can you have a look? And the next thing you've got to do is you've got to present the opportunity of Nexarize. And S is simply sorting. At the end of it, as a business partner or as a customer. That's the actual armor. So you've got your head protection. You've got your armor around you. Then what does a bike need for it to move? The most important thing, which is what? You got fuel. Doesn't matter if it's the greatest bike in the world, if you don't have fuel, is it going to move? No. What is your fuel in next rise? Is your burning desire to become a success story. That is your fuel. That is something that is going to propel you on a day by day basis to be successful. You know, I want to talk to you about this man called, his name is Mr. Ratan Tata. You know, he saw the population of people in India is one point, over 1.2 uh, odd billion people. Today, 1.3 billion people. And most people can't afford cars. So he decided, hey, you know what, let me start a car that is affordable. And he called it the one lakh car, or a car that you can buy for a thousand pounds. He made the cheapest car in the world, it's called a Tata Indica. All right, guess what happened? He did it in 1998. One year later, he thought everybody would want the cheapest car. Nobody bought it, not many people bought it. It was a complete failure. So this man by the name of Bill Ford called Mr. Ratan Tata and says, don't worry, we'll buy your car division from you. So Ratan Tata now goes to Detroit and meets Bill Ford. They speak for three hours. At the end of that, 
Rotten Tusk has to make the signature so that the sale can be done. But while he was going to make the signature, Bill Ford made two statements. Statement number one. Do you know, Mr. Tata, by us buying this from you, we are doing you a huge favor. Ratan Tata was hurt. Then he made a second statement. Mr. Tata, why did you get into something that you didn't know much about? Friends, as you're building your next size business, do you think people are going to say this to you? Oh, yes. You're a, you're a storekeeper. You're an engineer. Your dad was a, you know, a, a Tesco worker. You're not meant to be business. You want to hear this, friends. So that deal that was about to get signed didn't get signed. You know what Ratan Tata said? You know what? I would rather not do business with you, but I will actually go back. And now this car that I failed to make, I'm going to make it work. Here's the beauty about it. Nine years later, 2008, Ford owns Jaguar Land Rover. And Jaguar Land Rover is now going into administration because it doesn't have any money. It's going broke. But Ratan Tata's company is now growing really great. Guess what Ratan Tata does? He calls Mr. Bill Ford. Says, brother, come to Mumbai. I'm going to buy Jaguar from you. Bill Ford goes to Mumbai, sits in front of Ratan Tata. He, Ratan Tata writes a check for nearly 2.4 billion, but he doesn't say a word. And guess what the Ford says to Mr. Ratan Tata? Mr. Tata, by you buying this from us, you are doing us a huge favor. Isn't that amazing? Today, Ratan Tata owns Jaguar and Land Rover. That's the reason why I drive Jaguars and Land Rovers. Two reasons. What goes around comes around. Yes or yes? And number two, a Jaguar Land Rover is a British car. It's got an Indian engine. I'm a British man with an Indian engine inside of me. Does this make sense? <laughs> two questions was asked to Ratan Tata. Two questions. Question number one to Ratan Tata. And the question was, Mr. Tata, what is the most pleasurable thing that you've ever done in your life? He said, the most pleasurable thing for me to do in my life is doing the things that people said can't be done. Isn't that amazing? And the second thing, the reporter asked him, listen, how do you always make the right decisions, Mr. Tata? And this was the most powerful statement. He says, I don't believe in taking right decisions. I take decisions and I prove them right. Isn't that amazing? How many of you would like to do that one day, to stand in front of your friends, your family, the world, and says, I took a decision to be a part of this amazing company, and today I've changed the course of life of thousands of people around the world. Isn't that amazing? The moral of Ratan Tata's story is the same thing that was said by another amazing gentleman. You do not fight for your freedom with other people. You don't wrestle with other people. You don't wrestle with professionals in grounding who actually bring you down. They ground you down. Professionals in grounding stands for P-I-G, pigs. You don't wrestle with pigs. Yes, because that's the reality of what George Barnard says. Don't wrestle with pigs. Why? Because you both get dirty and the pig likes it. <laughs> when you're building this business, never, you know, never wrestle with professionals in grounding, the people who will make you feel low. Only surround yourself with the kins who will say, listen brother, you can do this. Listen Gemma, you're going to be a senior vice president one day. Keep pouring out. Keep fighting. So that one day you will actually plant that flag. F-L-A-G. Fight like a giant till I hear your testimonial as senior vice president crown. Work with the kinship of those kind of people and that's what you want to do. As I'm going to close friends, you see for me, if you understand a bike, what is the whole reason I ride a bike? Every single person, I'm telling you, when I started riding a bike, every single person said, don't ride a bike. You know why? They give me stories of somebody who's fallen from a bike and died. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? But for me, the reason I drive a bike is once you ride it, I feel the actual freedom. You see, why you're driving the ride, when you're actually riding the bike of Nexarise, for me, every part of that bike is about freedom. Every part of Nexarise should be, every element of that, you know, entire vehicle is about freedom. The compensation plan, what is it for? It's your freedom. The products and services, what is it for? It's your freedom. These training events, what is it there for? Your freedom. Everything is about that seven letter word called freedom. So you can achieve financial freedom, spiritual freedom, emotional freedom, and live a free life. That's what it's all about. Because there's a gentleman by the name of Darby. Yes, he actually was a gold lover. He actually went in the early 1850s, went and bought a mining land with all his money. 
And the challenge was, he actually went and dug and dug and dug and dug and dug. He found a little bit of gold. And then he dug and dug and dug and dug and he got frustrated. And he says, there's no gold left. So he sold that land of gold for $100. And the guy who bought it actually then went and got a geologist. And the geologist comes and looks at the mine and says, you know what? There is gold here, maybe three to four to five feet. The geologist came and the person who bought the land, he actually started building and digging and literally three feet later, he found gold. Real story. See, many of you as you're building your next size business, it's very, very tempting to quit when you don't see the results. That's because many people don't understand in next size the fundamental principle, most people overestimate what they can build in one year and underestimate what they can build in three years. Think about that. Most people overestimate what they can build in one year, underestimate what they can build in three years. Each and every one of you as you're building your journey, when you see the RD10s walk on stage, you see the TC5s walk on stage, you're like, man, they're doing it, I can't do it, and you feel like quitting. Remember, you're just three feet away from gold, so don't quit. Because it's all about your freedom. You gotta build, Next rise, because one day you will achieve freedom, one day you'll be able to come on the stage, one day you will literally thank all of the people around who stood by you, who gave you the balance, who gave you the intent, who gave you the actual kinship and the equipment. Because what is special? What is special about Next rise? What is special? The compensation plan? Yes, amazing. The training? Amazing. The products and services? Amazing. But you know what I really feel that the really help you in this business are three people who will stand by their mission no matter what happens. That's what I believe you. Three people. You put millions of dollars in front of us. Three things we will not, three things we will not, we will not sacrifice. We will not sacrifice our mission. We will not sacrifice our vision and we will make sure that we are with you because our mission is very clear. We want to create an empire on this planet that will genuinely help people achieve residual income so that you will have freedom, you will experience it and that gives us the biggest joy. And every single day as we're building this business, as we are riding the bike of freedom, for us what matters the most is each and every one of you. Listening to these words, you know, because the eyes are the window to the soul. You'll be able to look into our eyes and I'm telling you, you will not find three crazy guys like us who, you know, like us who built a company in the midst of the pandemic when everything is shutting down and was able to create something. And there are people who come to us and say, listen, you know why we have not signed up in next rise? We're just waiting to see you complete one year. Just waiting to see you complete one year. Because most of the network marketing companies fell in the first year. We completed one year. Now you're growing into over 166 countries. So friends, as I close, let me tell you something. You want to grab this with your hands, take this as your freedom journey, and you want to understand that you're going to have a life of balance, intent, with the right kinship and the right equipment. And I promise you something, you will be having the best days of your life. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Take care. God bless.